Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I am Lottie from Lottie Louise Art and I'm a wildlife and pet portrait artist. I work mostly using pastels but I do sometimes work in graphite, coloured pencil and acrylics too. For this video I'll be using pastel pencils. I'll be using a mixture of the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils and the Caran d'Ache ones. I'll be drawing two different types of dog ears. The first one will be the floppy ear type, which I find a lot easier to draw. And the other ear type I'll be drawing is the kind of sticky up ears, which have like lots of hairs coming out of it. Sorry, that's hard to explain, but you can see here what I mean by that. Hopefully that will make sense. The other main dog ear type is long and curly, like a spaniel's ear. So if you'd also like a tutorial on that, please let me know in the comments down below and then I can create that for you. Now let's get into the video. I'm starting off showing you how to do the floppy ear type. For these, I usually scribble over the whole ear or a section of the ear as um, this will be the base layer. For this, I just use one mid-tone shade and then I use a blending stamp to blend the entire layer out so that it's relatively smooth. This dog's ear is grey, so here I used a mid-tone grey for this. I used a Caran d'Ache pastel pencil for this because they're a lot softer than any other pastel pencil that I've tried, so they blend out super smoothly, which is why I like using them for my base layers most of the time. This doesn't need to be done very neatly, I just roughly scribble over the area that I want to cover. And this is why I love working with pastels so much, because your first layer does not need to be neat at all, you can just layer over the top to create all the details afterwards. Towards the tip of the ear, the fur was lighter, so I used a light grey pastel pencil to add some short fur strokes to the tip, as well as any other areas which are lighter than the mid-tone colour. When drawing this sort of ear, you need to pay close, close attention to where the darkest and the lightest areas are because this will give the ear some shape. What I mean by this is the ear isn't completely flat, it will bend in certain areas, and the lights and the darks is what creates the illusion of a curved ear in your drawing especially if the dog's ear looks shiny in your reference photo. To create that shine, you need to get your values correct so you can replicate the shininess of the dog's ear in your drawing and show where the light is hitting that the dog's ear. I then used a darker grey to shade in the areas which the fur is the darkest. After adding my mid-tone base layer at the beginning, I then always like to shade in roughly where the lightest and the darkest areas are, just as a guide for when I add further details later. For the section of the ear that I am drawing now, I did add the darker shade first and then fill in the rest with the mid-tone grey shade, which is sometimes the way I do it too, it just depends on what I feel like doing at the time really. Just in case you're wondering what I'm using to blend out the pastels with, it's a blending stump, which is basically a stick of paper, which is great for rubbing over your pastels to blend all of the colours together and to get rid of any graininess to create a smooth looking drawing. I couldn't live without blending stumps, they're an essential for creating my pastel artwork so I'd highly recommend getting some if you haven't tried them already. As you can see here, I'm using a lighter grey again to shade in some of the lighter areas but also I'm starting to add in some fur strokes now. When drawing fur you need to make sure you look at what direction the hairs are going in because again this will add shape to your drawing and make it look more accurate and realistic. And since this dog has really short fur, you also want to make sure that the pencil strokes are quick and short, so that it replicates the short fur correctly. If you make the pencil strokes too long, then the fur will look longer than it should, which obviously means it won't look exactly like the dog that you're drawing. I also add some light pencil strokes over the mid-tone areas to blend the light and the dark areas together so that it doesn't look too blocky. If you do make a mistake using pastels and you accidentally add dark or light into the wrong place, the great thing is that you can quite easily correct this, as long as you have enough tooth of the paper left to add more pastel on top. I'm using pastel matte paper here which has a lot of tooth, so luckily it can take many layers of pastel until you cannot add any more. You will know when the tooth of the paper is filled up because the pastel will sort of glide over the paper and barely any pigment will stick anymore. As you get used to using pastels, you will learn how many layers you can add until you get to that point. It's just trial and error really, and you'll soon figure it out. 
In case you're wondering what I mean by the tooth of the paper, I mean the paper isn't completely flat, it has little tiny grooves in it, which is what grips onto the pencil. The more layers you add, the more these grooves get filled in. And when these grooves are completely filled up, you will notice that those areas of the paper will appear a lot smoother and you won't really be able to see the texture of the paper underneath anymore. I hope this makes sense. I'm not always the best at explaining things, but I'm doing my best to try and think of the best way to explain it for you. I'm just adding more and more layers of pastel, adjusting bits as I go. I like to keep doing this until I'm just happy with how it looks, so I just keep looking back and forth at my reference photo and then back at my drawing to make sure that I have everything correct. As this is a grey ear, I did just use different shades of grey, but sometimes you might notice other colours, so for example, you might be drawing a black dog, but there may be blue tones within the fur so you can add in some blue pastels, or you may be drawing white fur which may have some purple or pink tones within it, it just depends on the reference that you're using and you have to just pick out the colours you can see within the fur. I'm thinking of maybe doing a short tutorial showing you how I draw black and white fur at some point too, as they're often the hardest fur colours to get correct. Strangely enough though, I often find drawing brown fur the hardest and I just think that's because there are endless shades of brown and it can be overwhelming with what colours to use sometimes. I'm now going to move on to the second ear type. This type I find so much harder to draw and when I used to use coloured pencils I found this ear um, type almost impossible to draw and with pastels it makes it so much easier because you can use light colours on top of dark which just suits the way I like to work a lot better. So here I started off with a dark grey colour roughly scribbling in where all the darkest areas are. In this case it's right in the centre of the ear. I'm going over some of the lighter areas too because later on I will add light grey pastel to add little hairs on top of the dark area but I like to start off with the dark pastel as a base for this, you'll see why later on. I used a Faber-Castell pipped pastel for the dark base layer here and you can see when I blend it out with the blending stump it doesn't create as much of a smooth finish as the Caran d'Ache pastels did when I used that as a base layer on the previous ear type. This is because the Faber-Castell pit pastels are quite hard pastel so they don't blend as easily but they get great for creating smaller details and adding in little fur strokes and things. The Caran d'Ache ones aren't as good at creating small details with because they're so soft and they're thicker as well as in the pastel inside is thicker so it's hard to create a sharp enough point to add in these details. I then start to add in some of the colours around the edge of the ear. In this case the dog's fur was very yellowy so I added in some yellow and brown colours. The fur on this ear was always going in the outwards direction so what I mean by that is the fur was always going out towards the edges of the ears so I made sure I followed that fur direction when placing my pastels down. Even when putting the initial layers down, I like to make sure I map in the fur direction, just as it stops me from getting confused a bit later on, since I already know what direction the fur will need to be drawn in when I add in further details. This stage of the drawing I like to call the ugly stage. Most artwork, especially pastel artwork, has a very ugly stage near the beginning, especially with the way I like to work, since I like to scribble down some of the base colours, so my drawings look quite messy at the start. It isn't until I start adding in the details that it starts to look better. If you get to the ugly stage and you feel like giving up because your drawing doesn't look great, make sure you keep going and push through this stage. I promise you it will start to look better once you add in more details. After I've covered the entire ear in colour, I like to blend it out using the blending stump so that all the paper is covered in a layer of smooth pastel. After that, I slowly start to add in some fur strokes, which should slowly bring the drawing together. The centre of the ear needed darkling up since it was very dark in my reference photo, but I want to make sure I don't add too much pastel because I still want to be able to add some pastel on top as I want to add some loose hairs there. This ear type tends to have quite a few hairs which overlap the dark areas a bit and you won't be able to do this if you've filled in the tooth of the paper already. If you're trying to add some lighter hairs over some darker areas and it isn't working, try using a softer pastel such as a Caran d'Ache um, pastel pencil because this will grip onto the paper a lot easier even if the tooth of the paper is almost filled up. 
I highly recommend buying the white Caran d'Ache pastel pencil, even if you don't want to buy any of the other colours, just because it's so handy when I want to add lighter hairs over the top of dark saturated areas of my drawings, so for example when adding whiskers onto a cat at the end of a drawing or something like that. I'm now adding some light grey hairs on top of some of the dark area of the ear. This is why I wanted to add the dark layer there first, so that it can peek through the gaps between the hairs. Since these little light grey hairs aren't really saturated and close together, you want to make sure there's a nice layer of pastel underneath first so that it can peek through the hairs. I'm just adding in all the final fur details around the ear until I'm completely happy with how it looks. These ear drawings took me about half an hour each to draw, which isn't bad because they're quite large. Normally when working on my pet portrait commissions, the ears wouldn't be this large, but I just drew these examples quite a bit larger so that you can easily see the techniques I use and the way that I add all the details. Obviously, no two dogs' ears are going to be identical, but these two ear types are quite common, so I thought these would be the best ones to show you, and I really hope that these short tutorials have helped and given you a few tips. If you have any other specific videos you'd like to see in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Even if you'd like me to do a slower, almost real-time video, I'd be happy to give that a try as well. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. See you soon. Bye guys!